Welcome back everybody, this is Joe Astorino, CCIE number 24347, and in today's video lesson we're going to be taking a look at running EIGRP over a frame relay hub and spoke topology type network. Now this is a very important topic to understand uh, when you're starting out uh, the concept of hub and, hub and spoke, even at your CCNA level, and as you get into some of the more uh, complex configurations going up to CCNP and certainly CCIE becomes a very important topic. We're going to look specifically at one particular important thing you always need to remember when you're configuring EIGRP over a hub and spoke network. So let's get started. We actually haven't configured EIGRP yet. We've got all of our IP addresses configured and we have the frame relay configured but we haven't configured any routing. So we're going to start out on router 4, one of our spokes. Then we're going to move up to the hub, router 2, and finally down to router 5. So let's jump into that. Now each router actually has a loopback interface of the router number. So like on router 4, we've got a loopback 0 here of 4.4.4.4. And we're going to advertise those into EIGRP as well. So let's say router EIGRP, I'm going to say 19, just because. No auto summary. I'm going to say network 100, 100, 100. That's my frame relay link. And 4.4.4.4. Let's go over to the hub. And very similar here, AS is going to be 19. We always want to disable auto summarization. We see our neighbor there came up with router 4. Go over to the other spoke. And again, very similar. and we see our neighbor came up there. So let's jump over to the hub, do a little bit of verification. We're going to say show IP EIGRP neighbor. And we do see we have a neighbor relationship on router 2 with both router 4 and router 5. Let's do a quick show IP route EIGRP and take a look at what routes we have. And we are learning the loopback of router 4 we're learning the loop back of router 5. Life is looking pretty good on the hub. Let's make sure we have reachability. And we're going to source this ping from our loopback interface to make sure that router 4 can also get back to our loopback. That looks good. Let's go over to the other spoke. Sourced from loopback 0. And that looks good. So everything looks good on the hub. Let's go over to one of our spokes, router 4. And let's just say show IP route EIGRP. And you might notice right away there that it doesn't look complete, doesn't look very good here. You can see I've got the route from the hub, I've got the hub's loop back, but what happened to my route for router 5? Also over on router 5, I've got the same thing, right? I've got the route for the hub, but I don't see the other spoke. So basically I'm missing my spoke-to-spoke -spoke communication. Let's go back to the diagram for a second and think about that. Think about what happens when router 4 sends out his EIGRP routes. So he's going to send out an EIGRP route up to router 2, right? Then you would think router 2 may go ahead and send it out PVC 205 down to router 5. So what's happening here? Well what's happening is the rule of split horizon. Now you might remember this from back in CCNA. If you're studying for CCNA it's certainly very very important as you go through your Cisco career. Basically the rule of split horizon says that a router can never send a route back out the same interface that it received it on. 
And the reason we do that generally is for loop prevention purposes. So if we were on, say, an Ethernet network, we wouldn't want router 2 to send the route right back out where it came from because it could come back to the source for one and it could end up causing routing loops. Now in this particular case we actually need router 2 to go ahead and send the route back out the same place it came in because there is no direct connection here between router 4 and router 5. You'll notice there is no permanent virtual circuit here between 4 and 5. We only have a circuit between 2 and 4 and this circuit here between 2 and 5. So really what we need to do is first understand the problem. The problem is split horizon, right? Router 2 gets the route and it won't send it back out serial 0, 1, 0 because it's the same interface it came in. That's the rule split horizon. The trick is, well how do we make this work then? Well what we do is we go over to the hub and we actually will just disable split horizon. One thing I want to show you guys before we do that, how you can verify if split horizon is on or off. What we're going to do is a show IP interface serial 010. And if you dig through there, what you'll see is right here, split horizon is enabled. So you can always check that. Now what we're going to do is disable it, but we have to do it specifically for EIGRP. So I'm going to say no IP, split horizon, EIGRP, and then the autonomous system number we're working with, which was 19. Now as soon as I do that, you will see your neighbor adjacencies bounce, so be careful with this one in the real world. You see our neighbors are up here. Now let's check things out. We'll go back down to router 4, show IP route, EIGRP, and now we have our routes. So let's see, can we ping 5.5.5.5 sourced from our loopback zero interface? And we certainly can. So what's happening now is router 4 sends a ping packet here sourced from 4.4.4.4. And he goes up to router 2. Router 2 says, oh, I have split horizon disabled. So I can go ahead and send that back out, the same interface I got it. Sends it down to router 5. Router 5 sees the packet from 4.4.4.4, and he replies. Packet comes back up. Split horizon is disabled, so it comes right back down for the ICMP echo reply. So that's about it today, guys. A very important lesson. Remember, when you're dealing with frame relay hub and spoke, or really any kind of hub and spoke network, and you're running EIGRP, you're probably going to want to look at disabling split horizon on the hub. Similar with RIP, uh, depending on what kind of topology you're working on, with RIP on a frame relay physical interface, frame, uh, split horizon is actually disabled by default. But if you're working on a frame relay multi-point sub-interface, or a frame relay point-to-point -point sub interface, and you're running RIP, then it is enabled by default. So with a multi-point sub-interface, you may need to go in and tweak it with RIP as well. That's about it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Again, this is Joe Astorino. You can follow me on Twitter, at Jay Astorino. Check out my blog over at astorinonetworks.com. And of course, keep coming back to the YouTube channel for lots more great Cisco videos. Until next time, guys, keep studying hard.